It is the first mission devoted to mapping the moon's gravity field. NASA's GRAIL-B spacecraft has joined its twin, GRAIL-A, with both circling the moon now. It also seeks to verify whether the theory held by many scientists that the moon is made up of two bodies that collided is, in fact, accurate. Many scientists describe the mission as the most important since humans landed on the moon. Well, joining me from Boulder in the U.S. state of Colorado is Phil Plate. He's an astronomer and a blogger for Discovery Magazine. Thank you very much for being with us. What are some of the mysteries that this mission, do you think, will help unlock? Well, the whole purpose of the mission is to actually map the composition of the moon. GRAIL stands for the Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory. And what that means is that they're going to map the gravity of the moon to try to figure out what's inside of it. We can't get down into the middle of the moon, but by using these spacecraft, we'll be able to map what's going on underneath the surface and hopefully reconstruct the history of the moon. It is quite extraordinary. There have been something like, well, over 100 missions to the moon over the years. Why do you think that we know so little about it? In fact, some people have noted that we probably know more about Mars than we do about our nearest neighbor, the moon. In some ways, that's true. On the other hand, we live on the surface of the Earth, and we don't know that much about the interior of it either. It's hard to get beneath the surface. And the Apollo missions weren't on the moon very long, and we, we really haven't sent that many missions there. So what this one's going to do is it's actually two separate spacecraft. I have a model of the moon here, and they're going to orbit the moon in basically the same orbit. And if one of them gets pulled a little bit harder than the other one, because say there's something more dense on the surface of the moon, a mountain, a meteorite impact, something like that, then the separation between the two will change. One of them will get pulled away from the other one. And by using that, by determining the distance between these two spacecraft, they'll be able to map out all of the structure of the moon and find out what it looks like underneath the surface. And how do you think that this will help future missions um, to actually land on the moon's surface? Well, I don't know if it's going to help anybody land there, but what it's going to tell us is about the history of the moon. So uh, it's not going to map the surface so much like we're doing now with some other probes like the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, but it will tell us what's going on underneath. So eventually it's possible that when we put bases and colonies on the moon, they'll have a map of what's underneath the surface if there's something there that might be interesting and, and worth taking a look at. And do you think that we might actually get to the bottom of if there was once a second moon? Well, the current theory of the moon's origin is that something about the size of Mars came in and hit the Earth a glancing blow, and that ejected out a huge amount of material, and then that stuff formed around the Earth into the moon, and then the moon evolved from there. It, it's been changing ever since for, for several billion years. And it, it's hard to say exactly what happened. We're pretty sure that's the scenario, but we don't know exactly how this happened. Did the second body that hit the Earth did it coalesce into the Earth? Did, did part of it form the Moon? And the more we can find out about the Moon's interior structure and, and even the surface material, the more we can learn about this event that happened actually four billion years ago. All right, fascinating stuff indeed. Phil Plate, thank you very much for talking with us from Boulder, Colorado. Thank you.